Excellent. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 176. Yep. 176, baby. Woo! Woo! Oh, Woo! Adventurous one hit. Uh, just a reminder before we start, uh, this is a relaxed performance like all of our shows. Uh, that means there won't be any sudden loud noises. Uh, if you need to leave and return during Thanks, baby. the show, Woo! <laughs> this is one blade. A me. Uh, <laughs> so formal, guys. So yeah. formal. Um, also, uh, the lights will stay up. Um, we are having a bit of a glitch with the hotel lights occasionally. These lights here will always stay up, so you will never go to blackout. And if the hotel ones glitch, I'll get one back up and running in 10 seconds. Um, also, there's a relaxed attitude to sound and movement from the audience for the benefit of people who struggle to be silent and still for the hour. Uh, we also have Tommy for this hour, who is our DSL interpreter and will be interpreting everything that happens. Um, none of you look like you need closed loop hearing headsets. If you did, I'm sorry, I'll be over there. Just give me a wave. But I will hand you over now to Chris, who is our games master. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. You're too kind. No, more, please. There we go. Thank you. Excellent. Hello. Welcome to Adventurers Wanted. What are we? doing here. <laughs> we are playing a tabletop role-playing game. For those of you who don't know what a tabletop role-playing game is, the lovely people to my left and to my right are playing characters in a universe that we are building together. I play the rest of the universe, so uh, traps they encounter, monsters they fight, allies they meet, drinks they imbibe. At this point in the adventure, what has happened to date? These people are all members of the crew of the Spirit of the Horizon. The Spirit of the Horizon is a naval research vessel. It got stolen away to a new universe when they cast a spell they found on a stone tablet in the temple after trying to escape an elder god that they awoke by accident. So they're now in this new world, exploring, trying to discover a way back. And at this point in time, leading up in the last five hours, they're exploring a sunken temple where a piece of the tablet that could take them back apparently is. They've been dealing with traps, a lot of water, it's all underwater. And at this point in time, I think it's best if we go around the table and introduce ourselves. So, do you wanna get started? Sure, uh, I'm Naomi, I'm playing Brina Froddle, who is the head of Arcane Research on the Spirit of the Horizon. Uh, she, which is our ship, uh, she is a gnome wizard, so she's about two foot tall. Uh, she used to be quite panicky. She's gotten worryingly <laughs> calm in the past few weeks. I think uh, it's so PTSD, guys. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's probably fine. Jim. Hi there. I'm Jamie. Um, I'm the player for this horse session. I am playing uh, Liabilitas Skilly Flank. A <laughs> Liabilitas. <laughs> uh, sailor with ill fortune. Every one of his ships he's sailed on so far has sunk, and he's hoping this one uh, doesn't follow the same fate. We're not on board the ship today, it's fine. Brina, <laughs> also, Brina did not need to know. Didn't need to know. <laughs> We're literally already don't underwater, don't so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. We're all sunk. Uh, hi, I'm Oz, and I'm playing the part of Darkness Evil Vile. The HR representative of the ship. <laughs> Lovely. First things first, can I have your dexterity scores, please? 14. 14. Oh, wait, hang on, I think it's changed. Has it? I think I buffed it a little can bit. Can I have some dark, mysterious underwater music? I'll definitely do dark and mysterious. I don't know how underwater I've done. Let's do some <laughs> noises into microphones, that'll be fine. Uh, 15 <laughs> is actually my dex score, I apologize. 15 for Brina. What have you got? 8. 8! I'm not the lowest, I'm nine. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid. And how do you, liabilitous? Yes. Liabilitous. I'll get the hang of it, good. <laughs> Lovely. So, the underwater temple that you found yourself in darkness, you're still there. This is really creepy, well done. It's meant to be. You just walked into a room where there was a strange mouth in the wall. You walked over to look at it and as you looked into the mouth, a red eye peered back at you, winked, and disappeared. And if I call, recall said, release me. There was a voice that said, release me. Indeed there was. Um, so. How you feeling, buddy? Uh, for a, like a split second, I'm looking at where this eye was, mm -hmm. and then I turn around to look at my compatriots, who the three compatriots I had earlier. Yeah, they're still were, there right now. Okay. Um, and I just have a look of partial horror on my face. I, there was an eye, and it, it looked and it wanted, it wants to be released. Can we not release it? Can we go home? At which point, <laughs> your three compatriots you were with earlier are suddenly surrounded by swirling, glowing, golden, magical energy. I look at my hands, really hoping it happens to me as well. It doesn't. And <laughs> all three of them 
are drawn away. The teleportation spell that affected the ship is still affecting them, which means random people seem to jump in and out about every hour. It's odd that. I wonder why that's happening. And then sometimes it doesn't happen for like three hours. Yeah, it's sometimes so people play for five hours. That's what yeah, happens. Yeah, it's so strange. Consider it like beaming. It's a lot like beaming, Star Trek fans. There we go. So, they disappear, and two figures appear next to you, who you haven't seen in a while, but they are your ship compatriots. Brina, what were you doing when you were sucked into the magical vortex of teleportation energy and taken to a horrible underwater temple? In a command that finally is in her remit, <laughs> Captain Girl had asked Brina to put stone skin on a scroll for him so he could cast it. Which is the first job in a while he's asked that she could do. So she was actually doing it, because that seems fair enough. That's mm -hmm. what she's being paid for. Well, as you start transcribing stone skin, the spell, <laughs> stone skin, make your skin turn into stone, on a scroll, as you are completing the last line, but not before you complete it, I'm afraid, you That's are fine. sucked out of the room and appear in this underwater temple room. Libba, <laughs> fuck it. Libba what? <laughs> Liabilitas. Liabilitas, thank you. Liabilitas, what were you doing before you got uh, sucked into the water? Being a liability. <laughs> being a liability. <laughs> I stood on the sides, having caught my ankle in a rope, and was dangling this much above the water, shouting help. Do we want to put Clumsy down as a character trait? I will. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so... That's not going to come back to bite you at all. <laughs> <laughs> so... As you dangle over the side of the ship thinking, why me? Why always me? You're suddenly surrounded by golden teleportation energy and are sucked into a strange room in a temple. Let me describe it for you two as you've just arrived. It's about 50 by 30 feet. There is a large man wearing black plate armor, looking a bit scared, uh, pointing at a mouth in the wall behind him. And as he points at the wall, in the, ma the mouth in the wall behind him, you see there's water flowing out of this into the floor. Uh, the floor is sluiced. There are various ways for the water to escape, but it is just pouring out of this mouth. And behind you is a door leading into a room that they were just in. You don't know that, but that's what's happened. So as you arrive, you're in this 50 by 30 foot room and darkness. The HR rep is standing there looking a bit terrified. What would oh, everyone like to do? For goodness sake, the time I actually get to do my job for once... We discuss this by contract. You actually do whatever the captain says you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, HR. <laughs> I've already taken on the STA. The what? The Short Thieves Anonymous. They were giving gnomes and halflings a bad name. They're all thieves. Um, I've taken on a lot extra. As you argue in this underwater <laughs> temple, <laughs> with a very scary underwater temple, Liabilitas. Liabilitas, what would you like to do? Could you do me a favour and, and like, look through this mouth hole, see if you see a giant terrifying eye? That's not a way to convince someone to get them to look through it. And it, then I go and look through it. <laughs> I don't think you can reach it. Can I not? Uh, no, you're this. two foot tall. How on uh, earth do you reach up? Jump. No, I'm not going to do that. Go on, make an <laughs> athletics check to no, jump. I'm going to look at it, see, oh no, I can't see through that, and then carry on looking around the room. That's what I built said. Um, oh, you haven't looked. Actually, can I pick her up to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you let him pick you up? <laughs> you can try. Oh, sure. come on, clumsy man, do it. Uh, what am I rolling for this? Are you trying to avoid it? Yeah. Uh, it's a grapple check, I so either athletics or acrobatics, please, and you the same. Athletics or acrobatics. Acrobatics. Ten. Ten. Eleven. Eleven. You try and You're grab. You're lucky. The, you try and grab the <laughs> tiny gnome, but she slips out of your grasp and says, "Do that again, and you will face some serious consequences." I, I hand you a little pamphlet that says, "Short people, not just for dwarf tossing." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gnome. <laughs> This room around you, this terrifying room, maybe it needs some investigating. <laughs> yes. Hint. Can, yes, I roll sure. an can I roll an arcana check to see if I can do You may, of course, roll an arcana check. I would like to look back through the hole, see if the, I mean, if the eye's gone, what's there now? Sure, that's right. 22. 22. Mm -hmm. The room tingles with magical energy, mostly abjuration, shielding magic. Okay. Um, but there's nothing specially magical about the mouth or anything else in this room. It is just a magical temple. So the mouth's not really magical at all? It's no. Just a, it's just a fountain? It's just a fountain. Oh, okay. Um, I, I only got a six. Fair enough. It's dark um, in the mouth. Yeah. Is it, is it just the door behind us and the creepy bus thing? Yep. Can I look for any seams on the walls? See if there's any on the walls? Secret entrances or whatever? Sure, make an investigation check for me. Oh, God damn it. Has anyone oh, mentioned it was abjuration magic? No. They did. <laughs> 
They, they, they looked for it, but they never told us. Eleven. Eleven on an investigation. Yes. The walls appear to be relatively... I mean, it, it's strange-looking brickwork. They're green, very large blocks. They appear to be in sort of ten by ten blocks that this thing has mm. been built, and it's a dead end of ten by ten blocks. Um, the floor, however, is interesting. With an eleven, I can't tell you how interesting, but it is interesting. I promise I'd made this decision before you said that, but I did want to see where the water was flowing to. Sure, the water's flowing onto the floor, um, and as you take a look at the floor, you as a magician would notice this, you realise that the floor has rivulets in it. And it appears these rivulets are pointing off at random directions, you're not quite sure, but they appear to be able to form some kind of path. Ah. I think we've got to make a path out of the floor. What have you had to do so far in this? Mostly move water around. <laughs> Good, then my hunch is correct. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm not strong. Um, can I can I see if I can sort of make out the pattern it should be compared to like the face on the wall? Sure. Uh, make an investigation check for me. That's not great. Twelve. Twelve. It appears that these rivulets could form any number of patterns to go around the floor. What it looks like is that if you turn all of these, the rivulets will all end up flowing from the mouth back into the room they just left. What do you mean, when you mean turn? Like, can you turn the floor? Uh, I mean, the floor, the pieces look at random angles. It looks like you could turn them, but you haven't tried it yet. Are they in, like, squares, or are they in, oh, is it like a rotating thing? Uh, they're in squares. So it'd be moving, picking up squares and moving them around, uh, theoretically? Ro- you could try and pick them up if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that, because frankly, I am not strong enough. Do you, mm-hmm. do you, you ask go... Darkness to? Uh, yeah, if Darkness could. That'd it's going to try darkness. and lift up one, at least one of the edges, see if it lifts at all. And Make then... a strength check. Uh, nine. It doesn't lift up, but it does turn slightly okay. in place. As you do this and start to slightly turn the panel, ever make perception checks? Uh, 16. Sorry. 15. 15? 20. Uh, 16. 16. Chloe, we can have some slightly more upbeat things are about to go terribly wrong music, please. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Chase music might work for this, actually. There's a quiet... coming out of the mouth. I need you all to make constitution saving throws. Uh, Everybody actually gets plus two because I have a magical aura. Thank you. Paladin. He is a holy warrior with magical auras. Uh, that's lovely. That's a modified 20. Modified 20? Uh, 16. 16. 16. 15. 